Today I have my little financial advisor with me and she asked me, Kai, why don't you invest in gold? And I think that's a very good question I'd like to answer because usually I speak a lot about stocks, ETFs and crypto, but not so much about gold. And today I want to address this and kind of share with you my thoughts about this. But again, as I always say, investing is personal. There is no black and white, no right or wrong. It's an individual decision that each of us has to make in their own investment style. I'm just going to share with you points why I think gold is not the best investment for me and potentially for you as well. But if you have other points or comments or disagree i'm always happy to learn and please let me in the comments what you think and why you prefer maybe gold to other potential asset classes one video i recently watched about the debate what is better gold or bitcoin was really really triggering for me and really made me think about the whole investment class of gold versus bitcoin or the digital gold as it's called these days so this video i'm going to link in the description below really it's a long video it's almost two hours but i really found this video very intriguing and it really made me question you know what are the benefits of gold what are the benefits of bitcoin and what are the disadvantages of both asset classes and I think that's a really really intriguing discussion that they have quite heated at some stage but they're both extremely bright and smart people so yeah I hope you find it interesting as well but please only watch it after this video so one of the big reasons why people actually invest in gold is that it is a store of value right so you invest and it keeps its value which you know sounds really great because who wouldn't want to preserve their value especially in times like this when everything seems to be dropping however when we actually look at the price development of gold over the last year it also dropped a little bit of value yes less than Bitcoin or other stocks at only 2.9% but still technically it lost the value plus let's not forget about the point of inflation because technically if I had a thousand dollars in my bank account it would still be worth a thousand dollars minus inflation here at gold I have the same inflation impact because now if I convert the gold back to dollars I would get less dollars than I would have gotten before so there is inflation impact plus the devaluation of the asset class itself so yes you could argue that it kept the value a bit better than some other asset classes but you can still see there is price fluctuation happening of course over a 10 year horizon though you can see that it did grow by 15% but then again over 10 years a 15% return is definitely less than the impact of inflation would have on gold itself I do understand that people invest a small amount of their net worth in gold but if I only have such a little increase over time you know I wonder if that's the best way I can put my money to use instead you could be investing into the S&P 500 which actually has returned over 200% over the last 10 years and that's a bet on America so that's fairly safe one could argue when we look at the market capitalization of the biggest assets out there we can see that gold still tops the charts with almost 11.5 trillion market cap so that's basically the price of gold multiplied by all the amount of gold out there so those two things together give you the total market cap of gold the second most valuable asset class out there is now Saudi Aramco which previously used to be Apple but now with the supply chain issue going on etc and other reasons we know that Apple dropped a little bit in market capitalization and Saudi Aramco with the increase in price of petrol and fuel around the world they have actually been booming quite a bit recently but I think long term this will reverse of course but it just shows you that the second highest asset class right now is only a fraction of gold so traditionally gold has amassed the biggest amount of investment which makes it very desirable and that's where the store of value comes from because you know people park their money in there and it has a valid reason for sure when we look at Bitcoin it's significantly less at only 570 billion now we know it used to be of course over 1 trillion in market value though if long term it goes to 100 or 200 thousand potentially and people start moving money away from gold and moving it into Bitcoin so eventually there might be some reversal there but you know nobody knows but at the moment gold is still the biggest asset by asset class total capitalization however of course the future may look differently and Morgan Stanley predicts that Bitcoin can become more and more a store of value globally for reserve banks etc and be future proof in case there's further price appreciation so the more institutional and governments buy into this that will bring the price of Bitcoin up and potentially the price of gold down because there may be less demand again may nobody knows the future but it might happen another point that I'm not really keen on is the supply of gold is sort of kept but then again every year there's new gold found that's being added to the total supply versus in Bitcoin there's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoins out there so once that's reached there can't be more coins created so naturally the price will increase over time versus gold if there will be new gold reserves being found that will obviously decrease the value of gold now apparently there's a giant asteroid flying around space which apparently has gold worth of 700 quintillion dollars I mean that's quite a bit of gold and NASA apparently already has some kind of mission plan to go there and start gold mining in space I mean that really sounds interesting of course that will probably still take a couple of years until we really can get there but if that ever was to happen that will naturally bring down the price of gold significantly because you know supply and demand 
the more supply is there it will definitely decrease the price for it now space sounds a little bit too extreme and too much in the future there are still major discoveries made on planet earth as you can see in siberia they're supposed to be one of the largest gold deposits at being discovered recently once they start mining those gold reserves this can be a huge supply influx into the market which again can adversely impact price development another reason for me is how do you value gold right now it has a price just under two thousand dollars but is that a lot is it not a lot i don't know why two thousand why not twenty thousand why not five hundred a price of an asset is worth what people are willing to pay for and that's the same truth for bitcoin right now bitcoin is under thirty thousand dollars but it can be hundred thousand dollars if people are willing to pay for this right so i think there's no right or wrong when people struggle to evaluate bitcoin for me it's hard to evaluate gold because you know i can't really do anything with the gold it's just what somebody else is willing to pay me for that and i just wonder if in the future the young generation is actually willing to pay price for gold because they can't really do much with it and we'll come to this in a second also let's not forget that in the 1930s the u.s government actually came up with the law to seize private people's gold i mean that's crazy imagine you had gold at home your own gold that you earned the hard way and then the government came and seized it away from you and there was nothing you could do about it and who's to say this can't happen again right i mean we have a lot of interesting governments around the world where i could definitely see such a thing happening again in the future if they're running into challenges difficulties they may do that in order to stay liquid and pay their liabilities to other countries this may happen right and the government has the full right to enter your home and take away your gold and for me that's really not reassuring now another issue for me is actually transacting into gold buying it and selling it i find it really really challenging and not very seamless first of all when you buy it how do you assess you're actually buying correct gold there's so much counterfeit gold out there they even say some of the reserve bank have gold that has been counterfeit because because it's extremely challenging to assess pure gold so if you go to a shop yourself and buy it you basically trust the person selling that it's true gold there are certain ways but as you can see here you have to run all these tests to ensure that it's true gold and doing it yourself this will cost you money right so you have to have a certain trust when you buy the gold so once you bought the gold the question is what you're going to do with it you can either lock it at home or at your trusted bank now most people probably start off with a small gold holdings and keep it at home which is fine if you start off but if it starts growing and you really start investing serious money i wouldn't feel comfortable keeping I don't know 100,000 in gold in my home there was a theft in the house you know you lose it all and I really wouldn't feel comfortable with so much money in my house so then the alternative is to keep it at the bank but as we know the bank also comes with certain costs there's vault storage cost in case you want to keep it at the vault at the bank and that really starts eating into your annual fees there is also the bank locker storage cost which is a little bit less but still there is a lot of costs involved with this and of course if you want to keep it at home and it starts piling up and getting a bigger amount you're gonna have to buy at least a decent safe that's fire proof that is resistant to theft etc so there are a lot of costs involved with storing your gold which with bitcoin you actually don't have any at most you will buy your ledger keep it there or you keep it for free at the exchange if you prefer to do this but you don't have any storage costs now another point that i don't really like about gold is basically it just sits there right or at the bank or at home but it doesn't really do anything for me and as you know i love passive income so with my stocks i get dividends from my etfs i get dividends from my crypto i get staking awards paid every single day with my gold i only get price appreciation hopefully over time which we've seen it hasn't actually happened in many years so far so there isn't really anything exciting i can get with the gold so the lack of passive income from gold for me really makes me even less likely to tie up a significant amount of my net worth into gold which basically just sits there does nothing for me another point is the portability of gold now imagine you lived all your life in a certain home you saved up now after a few years you decide to move to another continent to another country start a new life what you gonna do with your gold? I mean, you can't just take it in the back and travel across because there's a certain limit that you can enter the country with gold. Usually it's around $10,000. So if you have more than this in gold holdings, to ship it there in a secured transport is gonna cost you a fortune. And to bring it yourself is a security risk. Plus, you're gonna pay import duties if you bring gold to another country. So for me, being somebody who travels around the world, lives in many different countries, I call myself in a way a digital nomad. And that's another big factor why personally, gold just doesn't make sense to me. Another point to consider is that we all know the world is getting more and more digital with every single day. And I think as we're becoming more and more digital, I just wonder what such a precious metal just can do in a digital life, right? The young generation wants to invest into things that they have on their phone, that they have with them, portable. They can buy and sell at an instant. 
gold just doesn't do any of this. As the world goes more and more digital, there's less and less reason to have such an analog alternative. I do understand a house on a part and yes, that's analog as well because people have to live there. But with gold, it doesn't serve any real purpose. It just literally sits there. So I think over time, the demand into it gets less and less and we see the young generation less and less interested in gold. And if Mark Zuckerberg's dream of the metaverse eventually comes true or maybe another company will take lead, whatever it will be, potentially in 20, 30 years, most likely we're going to have some kind of augmented reality or metaverse, whatever it's going to be called. What you're going to do with your gold, right? I mean, you're not going to transact or send somebody gold. More likely going to be some kind of digital payment. So I just don't know what I'm going to do with my gold sitting around at home or in the vault that I don't even see, can't use. In this case, I'd rather invest into a fancy watch that I can actually carry and wear and use and enjoy and that still appreciates in value over time. Now, some people say, well, Kai, if doomsday scenario happens and there's no electricity and everything crashes and, you know, the world is coming to an end, then the question is still, what I'm going to do with my gold? I mean, I can't really divide it, right? I mean, if I have a block of gold, what I'm going to do with it? It's not like I'm going to chop some part of and pay for the bread. It's just not easily divisible. That's why people came up with fiat money because gold was just not a good way to transact. And another problem I have is with selling gold because actually I own a little bit of gold and I've been struggling so much to sell it because it's so hard to get the best price. I mean, I went to different appraisers, I get different offers and it's just so cumbersome to go there to get the offer, go to another one, get the price and just take so much time versus with cryptos or stocks. I can go to different exchanges or brokers, put in the quantity that I own and I see immediately the price and I compare to different exchanges, choose the one where I get the best price, make the sell and I have my money immediately. So much, much simpler than with gold. I get it. Gold definitely is a valid investing class. It's been so for centuries and probably going to be for many, many years to come. And I'm not saying it's dead or you shouldn't be investing in it. It's probably one of the least volatile investing classes you can have and one of the most stable asset classes out there. Now, do I think that in the future it's going to continue to raise in value as much as some of the other asset classes like the S&P 500 or Bitcoin? No, I don't think so. Plus the fact that I previously mentioned that it's not digital, it's not easily storable, very difficult to buy and sell and very difficult to transport. I mean, Bitcoins basically I can store in my head. I just need to remember my 12 word seed phrase. And with this, I can travel around the world without even a ledger. I just need to remember those 12 words. And wherever I go in the world, once I go onto the internet, I can basically with these 12 words, unlock my wallet and send my funds anywhere I need. Now try to do this with gold, you won't be able to. But as I said in the beginning, investing is personal. So it's your decision. Let me know in the comments why you prefer gold over Bitcoin or other investments. I'm happy to learn. Maybe I missed a point or you managed to convince me to invest into some gold. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. As always, stay healthy, get wealthy and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.